Hi there, Robin here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the Ultramix 3102 EQ from Blast King. This is, well, a two-channel 31-band EQ with a whole bunch of features on it. We're going to be covering all of this in today's video. We've got one set up right here, so we're going to take a closer look at it, but just before that, I want to say, how did we end up having this here in today's video? Because we want to talk about this in our next video. Yes, as I step up on a step stool. This is called the Tower of Power. It is a seven and a half foot tall, which is why I'm on a step stool, speaker. It features two 18 inch drivers and eight eight inch drivers along with two horns, one inch bank. This is a 300 pound rig, which comes apart into four pieces, each one weighing 75. It's one of the only rigs that one person can assemble and tear down. It even comes with wheels for the back of the subs. That's where we're going, but first, we got to do the 31 band EQ. So here we are as I now sit on a stool to talk about the 3102 EQ. Very important, I do have my mixing board on top. I'm using the XLR outputs of that unit to plug into this unit here. We do want our mixer to be the last piece before we get to our powered speakers or to our amplifier. This is going to make sure that we get the minimum amount of noise because at the end of the day this is going to amplify or adjust any sound that's being created anywhere else and this is the last piece that's going to get before it goes to the speakers if this was ahead of anything else if this was before and then we amplified it or preamped it up again with some gain uh, we'd probably be adding more noise to it so this is a very important part not just for this particular eq but for any eq you're going to look at uh, you do want to use balance cables all the way it's very important that's the three pin XLRs or the TRS quarter inch cables. So what we're going to cover are the actual features that are located across it. And this is pretty generic for a lot of models. The one thing that's very big and different here, and that's why I've put the 15 channel on top. This is what your standard going to see a lot of mixers today look like. They only have an up and down swing of no more than about an inch and a half. Uh, here we're looking at three inches. It gives you a lot more detail adjustment so you can actually adjust it they also add a button other companies do this as well and that's right here that's to increase or decrease the range so if we want to make this tighter so we can add more fluctuation more adjustment to it because we really want to have some control over it instead of tiny little increments we want to make that increment a little bit bigger you can change it from being a plus 15 to minus 15 with unity in the middle to plus six to minus six it just allows you to have big play on it, which is how I have it set up, or you can tighten it up and then you can still move it an awful lot. But instead of going plus 15 or minus 15, you're only gonna go all the way up to plus six or minus six. Now, this is originally set up right now for the Tower of Power from Blast King. And why is because I want to take a speaker that sounded really good all on its own and make it sound even better. As you have speakers, you're going to realize that every brand of speaker, every model of speaker, every size of speaker has its own little flavor. It's programmed in sound quality. What the engineer who designed that speaker was going for. And you probably bought it because of that particular sound. But it doesn't mean you can't adjust it, make it better, get more out of it by adding an EQ. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So I've separated our actual top speakers, which are located at the bottom of the EQ, for some particular reason, I went channel two on that. And then on top, because I guess that's what I started with, was the subwoofer. On the actual mixing board, my two main channels for my music going in each have their own dedicated channel. But instead of having it pan to the left and pan to the right for stereo, I have it set right in the middle. So this way, both channels are sending out full signal range for both left and right on the main out. Now, if that's a lot to follow, watch some of my mixing videos you can catch up on that one there but basically what that means is both channel channel one and channel two on the mixer are getting exactly the same audio track you're getting all the music sent into it what's different is from here i'm sending one of these out channel one for the subwoofer and i'm using channel two for the tops thus why the two different configurations with a 31 band EQ, you can make choices. So I, with their particular subs, I found that the sweet spot was at 40 Hertz. And if I had music that was playing lower than that, I was getting a little bit of looseness out of the sub, or I was really hearing a big full out tone up in the higher range of the 400. So this allowed me to increase the sweet spot, the good spot in the sub, which I found was between 3.1 and 80 Hertz. 
bringing that up. So I even got more out of the subwoofer than it was originally programmed into. And then I was able to taper off the lower end, which I found was loose. And the same thing when I got to real, and that's because they're 18 inch subs, 18 inch subs in a tight box. So this allowed me to, in my personal opinion, to get more out of it. And again, this is like, you know, having a barbecue recipe. Everybody's recipe is a little different. You're going to have to work and feel out your own. But as you notice, because I didn't want to bother with any background noise, I went from 20 kilohertz all the way down to 500 hertz. And I basically shut it all off, dropped it all down to minus 15. Don't need it. Why add any background noise? So I did that. Then we come to our mains. Remember, there's eight actual eight inch drivers plus two horns. And what I was finding was, is that I didn't want any low end because I was getting that out of my subwoofer. What I did want is I wanted to gradually pull off a little bit because there are eight drivers in that. It's a lot of drivers. So I pulled off a little bit. I did find that I needed to increase it around the five to 800 hertz range. So I did that. Then I found again, because they're eight inch, uh, that the mid range was really dominant. So I pulled off a little bit there. Then I repeated the same thing. I wanted to basically find the drop off just before the sharpness came in. And because there's only a single actual horn on each one, I compensated a little bit by bringing up my highs a little bit. And again, I, you find what you think works best for you. Now, remember, even though I have lots of low points here, I do have high points and my highest point is set at plus 10 dB. So that is going to adjust what's going on in the uh, output of this unit. So I do have to moderate that on the volume that I'm going to have on the speakers. I'm still going to run the speakers full tilt because I was able to balance it off that way, but I am going to monitor that. For gain controls and for the mixer, the mixer and the actual equalizer have been balanced off. So dynamic unity here matches with the actual mixer. If it was too high, I would have dropped it down a little bit on the gains here to balance off. So if it was too hot here, I would have pulled off a little bit here. This way would line up. I want to be able to keep an eye on the mixer, not on the actual EQ once the music's starting to play. Again, just because it sounds louder, doesn't that doesn't make it a good thing. You should be adding and taking away from your sound to find the sound that works best for you. So at the end of the day, I don't want this to be any louder than what I have here. Just a lot cleaner and something that makes the speaker sound better for me. Now, even though these are playing exactly the same channels, the dynamic meters here, you'll notice that one meter is much more active than the other. Sometimes it's the top, sometimes it's the bottom. That's because it's actually paying attention to what's going on here. So if the song has more bass in it, more bottom end, you'll notice much more activity here. If the song, if somebody's just singing away, you'll see that activity here. And you'll notice that they don't collate anymore because they're, the whole thing has been separated into two output channels, one catering towards bass and the rest catering towards the rest of the music. So here's my sub, there's my main, and that's the music that's coming in and out of it right there. Now the buttons off to the side, we already covered the first one. This allows me to change the dynamic range from a plus 15 to a minus 15. That's the range button up on top. Each channel has one. The next one's the ability to bypass the actual EQ. So if I press this button here, that's what's happening to the actual music going straight through the system. It's not getting EQ'd. If I push that button, now it's actually going to take in just what's getting played here. And I guess right now there's no bass in that particular song. There it is. And then the next one is a high pass filter. High pass filter allows you to engage the crossover right below it. And this is if I don't want any bass. Now you notice it's pretty much lost all activity because I hit that button. I'll turn that off. If I'm going to do this with a channel where I've turned everything off here and just kept this, I basically just canceled that out by pressing that button. So definitely I want to keep that one out. Now here, again, I've dialed down on my low end and I've adjusted into the mid range. If I didn't want any bottom end noise, I could just hit that button and it takes it away. But because I've actually compensated for all that here, I'm going to leave that button pressed out. And that's about it. These are crossovers. So from 12 Hertz to 285 Hertz. And I get to adjust that if I want right there. And this again is going to cut off that frequency. We're not, we're not playing around with that frequency. We're just chopping it off. So let's take it over to the table. So we can take a closer look at the backside. And so here we are, we've got the actual unit on the table. Let's take a closer look at the backside. We've got TRS quarter inch connections on the unit itself. Then we've got some XLRs beside it. 
then we have hard wire connections. So if this is going in a permanent rack mount and you've got cable but no connectors for some particular reason or you're worried about cables or spacing, you can go hardwire. So if you have balanced cables, you can go in and out right here, in and out right there, your choice. If you're going to set this up in a cabinet, you can. And then, of course, just run your XLRs back to the front to an actual locking panel. So you don't never have to really see the back of this unit again. The QR code is for the manual, so you can download it. If you want to learn a lot more about your EQ, just download the manual. It's a great way to not just uh, learn about this, but how EQs work in general. So let's take a look see at the front and go over the features one last time so we get a good up close look at what's going on. So again, 31 bands across both sides, no worries there. Other things EQs get used for is for feedback suppression. If you're in a large hall setting, uh, you can certainly use this to find the actual problem because feedback will be in a certain frequency range and you can pull back on that and it allows for adjustments on larger scales. Uh, if you're mixing a bunch of different speakers and you're trying to balance it off, this is a good way to get it done. Again, once you set it, you're probably not going to go back to it too often. Outside of that, there's always, you know, you can run a, an EQ off your computer. A lot of people say that, hey, I've got, you know, this or that and I can run. But the problem is, is if you do have that and it fails because, you know, how often do you, oh, it worked when I was at home, but now I've turned my laptop off, I went to my job. I'm at the gig now and I turn everything back on and it's like, I can't get these two things to run at the same time. With this, it's fixed. It's not going to go anywhere. You're going to turn it on. It's going to work for you. That's pretty much what's going to happen. Again, that's why people still buy hardware like this and people also buy things like compressors and limiters and add that on and have that in a nice carrying cabinet that you just have to pop the front off, turn the on switch on the power bar and it's ready to go. You just plug your speakers into it plug your mixing board into it, done. There's nothing else to worry about. You can plug a controller into this. So if you're a DJ and you're looking at that same issue, you can plug a controller into it because that'll be your main out before your speakers. And there you go. The 3102 EQ, the Ultramix series from Blast King. Uh, remember, much bigger than what you normally would see. It's about twice the size. Uh, there are some models that are out there like this. And of course it has Blast King's signature red sliders on the whole units so it makes it a matching set with their mixers of course if you're looking to make your sound better more catered towards what you're looking for an eq is definitely a way to go it'll take any set of speakers you have and make them better that's just the way they're built so i hope this video helped you out today remember to hit that subscribe button uh, remember we also have a review channel where we just do the features and benefits of products it'll be featured at the end of this video uh, if you haven't subscribed to that one, hey, by all means, please subscribe to that one. That's, you know, that's another channel we have. And again, it's more focused on just the quick reviews of the products, not as much about the how-tos that we try and do on this channel here. So remember to hit the thumbs up. I'd appreciate that too. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.